the special meeting of the Board of Selectmen for Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I have a flag in a virtual, let's see. So here we go. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. Um, and next item is citizen comments. Lauren, do we have anybody, any citizens on who would like to make a comment at this point? We have no one with their hand raised. Okay. It's 10 on though. It's a, it's a yeah. huge meeting tonight. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, um, with that, then um, uh, I guess we can move on to the business at hand. Um, and I'll move to uh, item number three, which is review the February 1st, 2020 special town meeting and February 15, 2022 referendum process, including the quiet period. Um, obviously, we're going to be doing uh, a discussion and having these votes in a little bit on a lot of lengthy resolutions and a special town meeting, as well as you know the, the referendum. And I thought it would be very helpful to um, invite in our town council, uh, Carrie Olson um, from Bertha Kalina, as well as Matt Ritter, who is our bond council. Um, and Jody Driscoll is also joining us from Bertha. She's been very involved in the Island Avenue transaction. Uh, but I thought if we could just spend a few minutes talking about the process, because I think for the public's benefit, they see this town meeting and they think, okay, what is the town meeting? Are we supposed to show up and vote at the town meeting? Um, and so if you could explain that a little bit, and then also just talk about this kind of quiet period, which um, I think is frustrating for the general public at times because they wanna get information from us. And a lot of people don't focus on these things until um, we're much closer to voting, um, like the two weeks beforehand. <laughs> um, and so I think just laying out some of the reasons of why the town cannot necessarily um, you know, get all the, inf we'll provide facts and figures, but just kind of the limitations that we as town officials uh, have in terms of educating the public on the referendums. So it'd be great if one or both of you could jump in and I don't know, um, Matt, if you want to talk a little bit about it to kick it off. Sure. And hi everybody and good evening. And hi Carrie, how are you? Um, yeah. So the, the, the pending referendum, the silent period really begins tonight and, and you hit on it, Peggy, because the town meeting is, is not in, in it, it is just simply to discuss the resolutions. And when you vote tonight, when you send this package to referendum, you'll note that it just says to discuss for the individual resolutions. It doesn't say to discuss and vote upon the resolutions. And because this town meeting is pro forma, because there's going to be no amendments or votes taken, SEEK would say, the State Election Enforcement Commission, that all necessary approvals are occurring tonight to send this question to referendum, right? It's not like the town meeting could come in and change the date or change the process. So tonight, when you send that to referendum, you enter into essentially a 34 day silent period. Um, but, but as Peggy said, it, it simply means you can't use municipal funds, right? That includes the Board of Ed to advocate for or against the question. It doesn't mean that you can't, um, first of all, in your private life, when you're not using your government issued emails or you, know, you can't use a government issued printer to print flyers, but you don't lose your First Amendment rights to advocate for or against on your own time with your own resources, right? But it's limited, of course, what the town can put out there. So a good example that often comes up is the town prepared a nice presentation as to why these projects would be good, right? Why they should happen. You can't have that on the front page of the town website after tonight because it's advocating for the project, one would argue. Um, but at the same time, as Peggy said, facts that don't have adjectives, that don't try to tilt the balance, that simply state what you're doing is more than appropriate. And one thing you're, you, you authorize tonight as well is an explanatory text. And that's authorized under 9-369B as in boy of the general statutes. That explanatory text will be approved by the town attorney. Um, and to make sure it doesn't advocate for or against, it can be mailed to every resident in the town of Madison uh, who's gonna vote in this. It can be, it will be put up at polling places. It can be put on the website. Um, that's the kind of information that'll be neutral. Questions like, what are the projects? How much would it cost? Do you have projections for debt service in the schedule in the future? All things that we'll look at to kind of paint it. So you're not in a corner where you can't do anything, but it's just got to be very, very factual. And then us lawyers will scrub it to make sure that words like great, 
awesome, necessary, vital are removed. And we just say that we're going to authorize, you know, improvements to a school, which is different than necessary improvements, right? Um, we have to be very careful how we word it. So that's why it starts tonight, uh, Peggy. And I'm sure there's individual questions. And Carrie obviously is very experienced, I have a lot to add, and glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Um, I think we talked a little bit about this in our meeting, but um, just, and I mentioned this at our um, academy public information session, um, the uh, presentations that we've done on these various projects um, kind of are a mix. They're fact, but there's also, you know, reasons why we think they're good projects. Um, and from my understanding is that a lot of these were done at the Board of Selectmen meetings. Um, and so those would continue to be available for people as part of the minutes of the meetings, but public information sessions, um, at least the ones that we've held, um, and then the school, the school uh, community um, had held, um, those would not be available on the website as long if there were the videos, because we, we, we take everything, um, you know, and record them on Zoom and make them available through the YouTube channel. So the documents can be scrubbed easily because they're just slides with bullet points, but um, but the discussion and questions and presentation portion um, for public information sessions, then um, I'm sorry, I'm getting got different things going on here. <laughs> um, I can't turn off the ringer. There. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. Um, and uh, so just to, to highlight again, so, if the, you know, for members of the public, if there's confusion about why can't I find that video, they took it down. It's not because the time I was trying to hide something or not provide information. It's just that there was um, it was con considered, uh, you know, too much of an advocacy type of discussion that was happening at the uh, board level. Correct. Yeah, and, and look, you know, I can't ever predict, nor, nor can any lawyer, if someone will file a complaint, but if someone filed a complaint, I do draw a distinction between posting something, which I mentioned, right on the town website, versus what is embedded in your meeting minutes, right? I mean, you're required under the Freedom of Information Act to put, you know, to post your minutes online, uh, given that you've had meetings via Zoom because of the pandemic in addition, to go and scrub meeting minutes, I think you could get a FOIA complaint about that. So I would never advocate for going back and looking at your meeting minutes, what transpired at those meetings, what happened, right? That was done before any of this happened, before the pending referendum. But that's different, right, Peggy, as you mentioned, than taking a presentation and sticking it on the website, uh, separate and apart from the distinct minutes that may have appeared at a Board of Education or a Board of Select Meeting. Yep. Hey, can I just add, Matt, a, a follow-up to that? This is Scott Murphy. Um, you know, on social media, if we were to share as an individual, um, not as a town selectman, uh, meaning minutes or a, a video of a particular meeting. Is that still appropriate? If it's your personal Facebook page with no tie to the town and no town resources, there's, there's no problem with that. Thank you. Any other questions from board members on this topic? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Matt. It's good to see you. Hi, Noreen. Um, it's nice to see you too. Um, just to go one, one step farther, um, so if the town produced a video, um, a presentation, I'm thinking of the Vote on Academy. If the town produced a video, we did two really good forums. That would be the town produced, the town held those forums. We can, and they were very, you know, there was a, definitely an advocacy piece. We're okay to put those on our, our personal pages. Yeah, I, again, I don't see how you're using town resources to do that. That video exists in the archive of your meeting minutes. Again, I can never predict if somebody what somebody may do or file a complaint, but I think it's very defensible if members of the Board of Selectmen went or any member of the public went back through archives of meeting minutes and was able to technologically figure out how to pluck a video. I just don't see how that could be deemed a use of municipal funds to advocate. And I think your personal page is so different than a town website or a Board of Ed website or a town page or something like that. Thank you. And I just want to add, good evening, everybody. I completely agree with Matt. I think it, it, you, you are not required to go back and start scrubbing your minutes um, or taking down any posted videos of means that have come before. It's that from this day forward, I would refrain from reposting, reasserting, creating new videos or doing anything that advocated a position one way or another. Every one of you 
could stick a sign up in your own personal front yard and, and that says vote yes or vote no. As long as you expend your own money and you don't use municipal resources to make those signs. And as, as Matt pointed out, you don't use the town printers to create flyers that advocate a position. You don't use your town issued emails to advocate a position, but every one of you has the right uh, on your own to advocate a position, just not using municipal resources. And I know one thing that came up too, Carrie, in our conversation was also just if if a board members uh, or other elected officials on any board wanted to write a letter to the editor or not bad, they're also allowed to do so because that's their personal. It's not using town resources and it's just it's just uh, giving their personal opinion on an issue. So that is allowable as well. Absolutely. And I, I have to say many, many years ago. Well, I should tell you that the one case that's cited under the statutes that's still in the annotated statutes that deals with advocating a position. I have the chagrin to say I was an associate on and it was my first major case before the Supreme Court and I was one of the associate, but we did lose. And it's still the case that's cited under the annotated statutes. So I am very sensitive to this issue. And I am very aware of the fact that the Elections Enforcement Commission takes the use of municipal assets very uh, uh, seriously and considers it very broadly. So again, as long as you're doing it on your own time, with your own resources, your own email, your own computer, you're good. The minute you step into the municipal realm, now you have to be worried. And I would strongly suggest that if you have any questions going forward, that you reach out to myself or to Matt, you know, or, or through Peggy to have her reach out to us. Uh, because this is the critical time period. But Carrie, again, I'm just going to put a pin on it. Sharing this meeting, sharing a previous <clears throat> meeting on social media, that is okay on our personal accounts. Absolutely, as long as you do not use a town asset to do so. So okay. for example, if you used your town email to send out a blast to all of your email friends and attach the video, you'd be in trouble. I don't know how to do that, so we're good. Okay. Well, you can easily get your personal and your town email mixed up, yeah. so I would be careful about that it. That is for sure. Actually, this, 25 years ago, I was called on this for um, postage. It was really through, P, through PTO. It was to, to get a school built or something. And it was the PTO paid for it that I was president of. Is that an issue anymore? I, actually, I think it got dropped. I don't think we got fined or anything. But what's the status of our parent teachers groups? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think the PTO is gonna be treated, you know, we have to be very careful, right? Because we're not here to advise anyone but the town and town elected officials and town employees, right? But I would say that there are statutes that govern third party expenditures um, and those are contained in Title IX. SEEK has a nice guidebook and you might point people to that. But really, for, for Carrie and I, we're here to, you know, we really can't advise them as they're not, you know, town employees or town officials. Okay, so it looks like we, we've got that item covered, and I think it's helpful for the public to understand that, um, just to, so they don't get frustrated, maybe, uh, on things in terms of town employees and things like that. Um, so I think that that's really helpful. Um, I did want to real quickly, because um, item number four, you know, is something we're going to have a big discussion about. I know our, our, our school superintendent is available um, right now, but he has to leave for a meeting. So I just wanted to kind of ask the board if there's any kind of questions that we want to ask him before we get to the resolutions regarding the school plan. I know we've already had this opportunity, but just because he can't stay on here much longer. So um, it's a little out of order, but I just thought we could open it up for just a, a couple of questions for uh, Dr. Cook, if um, we need to do that. Welcome. Good. I think, I think he's made some great presentations. Um, the Board of Ed has been working on this now for a decade. Um, so we've had ample opportunity to hear the hows and whys. Okay. Multiples, from multiple superintendents. 
Yes, <laughs> that's right. Okay, so uh, so I just wanted to get that out of the way, Craig, in case you do. I know you have something starting soon, and and wanted to make sure that you know people. If there were other things that popped up, you're you're free to leave when you need to leave. So <laughs> great, thank you. Yeah, we have our okay. uh, budget hearing tonight, so I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, all right. So with that in mind, then I think we've got you know some other things to talk about tonight. So let's move on and to item number four, um, which is discuss and take action to approve a purchase and sale agreement between the town of Madison and OLM Prep Real Estate Holdings LLC for the purchase of the Island Avenue School. Can I get a motion? So moved. Okay. And a second. Al seconding. Uh, or or uh, okay. Um, and all right. Um, and with that, I thought. Um, what I'd like to do actually, because this is the last time we can talk about this really with the public, and there has not been a lot of discussion um, in the public recently about the Island Avenue uh, proposal. Um, I wanted to real briefly, and this is, can be part of our discussion if that's okay, just highlight the transaction that we're proposing or gonna be voting on that's in the purchase and sale agreement. So this will allow some facts out there in the public to explain kind of what we're doing, why we're voting on this. Um, the board can then follow up with questions and then we could take our vote. Um, and it allows us to have a public discussion and some detailed facts that the public can watch later if they need to. Um, and I have no idea if this is considered advocacy, but I will share this. <laughs> so, um, um, so just real quickly to give a quick run through is the history of why we are where we are with the sale of Island Avenue. Um, the Board of Education voted to close Island Avenue back in 2017 um, as part of its redistricting plan where it shrunk its footprint. Um, and then the Board of Ed actually vacated Island Avenue uh, in June 2019, um, and they signed a lease agreement with uh, OLM Prep um, uh, to lease um, to this new school that was being formed. Um, uh, knowing that we needed to figure out a long-term solution for the building, uh, the Board of Selectmen established uh, an ad hoc future use committee of citizen volunteers and gave them the charge of coming up with a recommendation for the long-term uh, use of the um, school. Um, we knew that the people at OLM wanted to purchase the school. I think there was a lot of, um, uh, it was unclear what the community wanted and it was unclear what you know um, the town ultimately wanted to do with the property. So this committee was created um, and then it took about a year. Part of this was pandemic and everything else, but uh, the committee kind of came back to the Board of Selectmen a year later after doing public surveys, public hearings, a lot of analysis. They also conducted a septic analysis study on the property to understand its development op uh, uh, possibilities. Um, and they came up with a final recommendation to the Board of Selection, uh, Board of Selectmen to for us to launch an RFP process. And they said that, you know, the school use was probably uh, one of the least risky ways to move forward for the town, um, but that, um, you know, we could explore also uh, development opportunities. So with that, the Board of Selectmen um, appointed Colliers in an advisory role to manage an RFP process. We launched an RFP in May, and then we got three proposals back at the end of June. Um, and that included the OLM prep proposal for the purchase of the building for $2.3 million, and then two development proposals, both were that were um, focused on a more higher density development on the site. And that included um, purchase prices of $250,000 or $300,000 for, uh, for the property. These are the three options that we had. Um, we actually then uh, took this to a public hearing. Um, and then ultimately the Board of Selectmen made a recommendation to go with the OLM, OLM prep proposal um, and also referred it to planning and zoning for an 824 review, as well as the Board of Finance to review. Um, and so um, from then on, both the Board of Finance and the planning and zoning um, uh, uh, did their review. Um, we got some feedback from the Board of Finance of things that they felt were important to be a part of any kind of agreement. Um, and then we initiated kind of a, 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 a negotiation period about the transaction terms and conditions. Um, finally getting to a draft purchase and sale agreement in December. And then today really coming to um, a final agreement on the key terms for the purchase and sale agreement. Um, the Board of Finance met at 4.30 today um, and they approved the um, uh, financial terms of the transaction. Um, and so the board will be voting on that tonight. 
Um, just to give some quick highlights of what the economics of the transaction are, just so the public has as much information about this, because uh, the question will just be about the sale on the ballot uh, for the uh, property value. But um, just so that there's a lot of full transparency on what's in the purchase and sale agreement, um, you know, the town is going to be receiving full market value for the property that is after the RFP process. It's also in excess of the um, appraised value that we had received through an independent appraisal earlier this year. Um, and it, it gives us money to invest in our remaining schools, um, which is something the town had, had uh, committed to doing uh, when they decided to close uh, Island Avenue School. Um, we also, uh, I know there's a lot of concern because uh, the school itself is a nonprofit entity. The buying entity is going to be a for-profit entity, um, but we wanted to assure that there wasn't a quick uh, flip of the property to a nonprofit status. And so we wanted to ensure that we could get some tax uh, revenue out of the property over a period of time. And we um, have agreed to an eight year tax agreement um, and that will generate um, at a minimum around $50,000 in a, a, a year in annual taxes that will grow over time for, for the eight year period. Um, and keep in mind that this property has basically been tax exempt since the town acquired it in the late 1940s from uh, the Pinatelli family. Uh, so the, the property has never really paid taxes. So in that sense, I think we've got something um, that was good uh, out of this agreement to bring in some additional revenue um, in addition to a full market value purchase price. Um, the other thing that's part of this agreement is if the, um, if the vote fails, uh, the school is in a real bind because their school year ends and their lease ends at the end of July. Um, so we've incorporated at least because we're doing this through a referendum and it took us a while to get here, we felt it was important that they um, at least have assurances they have a home for another year. And so we agreed to extend the um, the uh, lease for another year at a reduced rent from $400,000 to $320,000. Um, uh, you know, if this fails at referendum. Um, the other thing it does is it takes the burden of any kind of uh, liability, capital improvement needs, uh, or maintenance costs off the shoulders of the town. I know our facilities director will be very relieved <laughs> when this property is uh, no longer in the hands of the town. Um, and then it also, um, uh, I do want to highlight though, because I know there's been a lot of discussion about this, that if it, by staying a school, um, we are required as a town to provide transportation and nursing services, and we do that for uh, the country school, which is also a nonprofit school here in town, and we are going to continue, and we've been doing that and paying for it for uh, OLM prep. Uh, we will have to continue to maintain that obligation because the state would require us, uh, us to do that. So there is a cost incurred for this uh, property being um, run, continue to be run as a school. So I wanted to highlight those things. And then there's other things in here um, that um, are complicated that have to do with deed restrictions, but there's a um, but we were able to negotiate a right of first refusal for the town for up to five years. So if uh, you know two years from now, the property owner decided they want to sell the property, um, we would have the opportunity to match that offer and buy it back if we didn't like what was being unfolded or just uh, there was a change in terms of what direction that we wanted to go into. Um, the other thing is the property has an existing deed restriction that offer, has the right of first refusal for the heirs, the Pignatelli heirs. And I know there's been a lot of conversation and articles about this. Um, and there's a long kind of interesting story about the Pignatelli family. Um, but the good thing is the heirs had actually uh, sent us a letter um, notifying us that their desire was that the property remains a school. Um, the heirs have the right to match a bona fide offer. Um, and, um, and so by us selling it to OLM, it, um, you know, they are, they would not be, um, they would not be, um, activating that offer or acting in that offer and, um, activating the right. Um, so it kind of settles that matter. Um, it also, um, we're also keeping the deed restrictions on property use, um, which right now exist on the property so that you cannot do commercial or industrial use for the property and that would stay. And it's also in a residential zone. So any um, zoning regulations um, would be limiting the property um, uh, through planning and zoning. So those things are all part of the transaction and, and, and our existing zoning regulations apply. Um, you know, 
positive thing obviously is that um, OLM will remain a part of the Madison community, um, which is something that we heard loud and clear. A lot of people in town want to see the school stay. And um, they've already funded over a million dollars in lease payments to the town. Um, and um, they are basically, you know, have been saying all along that this is an unsustainable um, cost to them, uh, cost burden, and they would not be able to stay in Madison if they had to continue to do so under a lease agreement. Um, and they've been advocating from day one that they want to buy the building. Um, it, this also aligns with the recommendations that came out of the Ad Hoc Island Avenue Committee um, with their report. Um, and um, it maintains the status quo for the surrounding neighborhood because it keeps a school that's been there since 1950 in place. Um, and uh, uh, it offers economic benefits, you know, employment opportunities for Madison residents. Um, and then it just avoids another academy situation, which we all know is has been uh, uh, a problem for us in terms of making decisions about um, vacant buildings in town. So if we were to lose OLM as a tenant, we would be stuck with uh, uh, an empty school. Um, and I know a lot of communities have been struggling with that throughout the state of Connecticut. I think we are very fortunate to be in the position of, of what we're being offered for the property, as well as what we've been able to receive from a lease standpoint, because a lot of other towns are, are almost giving away these assets uh, because of the uh, liability issues associated with them. So, um, so this is kind of a, a summary. I just felt it was important that people get as much information as possible um about this and this would all be part of the purchase and sale agreement that you will, would be receiving all the terms in here that will be available for review on the town website um as uh, prior to the referendum um so that is kind of a review of everything and i want to leave it up for discussion for the board any comments or questions i think we've spent a lot of time on this Together. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what Jody had for dinner tonight. Gosh sake. <laughs> okay. So um so I get I guess with all that, then I guess I can call for a vote. Um, um can I get a uh are all in favor of approving uh the purchase and sale agreement between the town of Madison and OLM Prep Real Estate Holdings LLC for the purchase of the Island Avenue School? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Nah. Okay, great. We are good. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much for that. I know that was a tremendous amount of effort on the behalf of this board. I appreciate everybody coming together, sometimes at the last minute, and I appreciate all our advisors, uh, uh, Carrie and Jody and Al, who um, got us through this. I know it wasn't easy, but we're here finally, so thank you. <laughs> um, um, so I guess we can move on then to item number uh, five, which is going to be, I guess I got to just read all this right uh, on the agenda. Lucky me. You don't, you don't have to, but you know, oh. maybe the, yeah, but maybe the, at least the titles of it, right? So. Okay. Uh, um, um, yeah. Um, okay, discuss and take action to approve a resolution to call a special town meeting and referendum vote with respect to the bond resolutions for the academy and the school projects, as well as the potential sale of the Island Avenue property and to approve the warning of a special town meeting to be held on Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, and a referendum vote to be held on Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. Um, including resolution A to appropriate $15.9 million to renovate the academy school into a community center and municipal building. Uh, item B, resolution to appropriate $89.2 million for costs related to the construction of a new pre-K kindergarten grade five school on Mungertown Road, renovations and improvements for the conversion of Brown Intermediate School into a kindergarten, I guess I'm reading the whole thing, and upgrades to Polson Middle School and to authorize the issuance of bonds or notes of the town in an amount not to exceed $89.2 million. To finance the appropriation or so much as may be necessary after deducting grants to be received from the projects. There was not a natural stop in that. Um, item C, <laughs> a resolution to approve the potential sale of town property located at 20 Island Avenue to an unaffiliated, to an an affiliated entity of Our Lady of Mercy Preparatory Academy, OLM Prep Real Estate Holdings, LLC for $2.3 million pursuant to terms and conditions set forth in a proposed purchase and sale agreement. And item D, approval of warning of special town meeting, Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, 
and referendum vote Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. So moved. Okay. Back in if you want me as a second, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> um, so with that, um, further discussion, um, I mean, obviously this has been a long road for the town and for this board and previous boards to get to this point. Um, and I think um, I'm excited that we can offer uh, residents of our town um, the ability to make some big strategic decisions on important assets for our community. And they all relate to schools. Um, we have the schools of the past, Madison's past, and we have the school plan for the future. And I think it's a great, segue to get us moving forward um, in a new direction for Madison. Um, so with that, I leave it up to board member comments and questions. No? I would just say, what am I on mute? I would just say that um, people are ready for a vote. All through all these issues, especially um, the school issue is how many boards of ed have worked on this. So I, I think it, our responsibility is to get the vote out there, get the opportunity for them to vote. I couldn't agree with you more, Noreen. I think that that was well said. I think, you know, again, with Academy, we're 18 years now and counting. So I think people are certainly ready, able and willing to um, invest some time, learn about the projects and uh, cast their vote. So I am beyond encouraged that we're taking this step uh, on November or on uh, February 15th. Um, very exciting. Scott, may I just make one clarification? Of course you can. Um, it's really 10 years because the academy wasn't turned over to the town until 2011. All right, I'm going to correct you next time, Noreen. Okay. Well, you know what? You need, you need an historian on this board, too. <laughs> we do. We have ha had Henry this morning. We didn't have him today. It was a big deal to close the school, and I remember how hard it was for that board event. Yeah. They just weren't ready to hand it over to the town. It took took them seven years. Yeah. Uh, any other board member comments? Well, I've had a chance over the years to say this uh, several times and I'm gonna say it again. It's time to let the voters decide. <laughs> Great, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, and finally, Bruce, any final comments? Before we do the vote. Uh, so this, I, I agree with everything that everybody has said. This has been a long time coming. Um, these are all well thought out, actionable decisions um, ready for taxpayer um, um, and voter input. Um, we are now officially handing it off to you folks. Um, and what we need from you now is to become educated, to become interested, and to show up on February 15th, whether it is through absentee or in person. Um, the vote is held, um, whether there's 10 feet of snow on the ground or whether it's 75 degrees and sunny. So um, it won't be postponed due to weather. It won't be postponed due to COVID. Um, the, uh, the vote is going to happen. And we need to hear your voice, everyone's voice in this. Um, these are well thought out. The Board of Education has worked very, very hard to put a proposal together for what they believe is right for our kids for tomorrow and for the next 15 and 20 years. Um, I have ultimate faith in their judgment um, and the quality of their work. Uh, we have been working hard um, on Academy now for, for many, many years, too many years. And um, this, is, this is the right time for a vote um, on Academy. And uh, I think it's terrific to think that we are going to keep a longstanding institution like OLM in the town of Madison, um, keeping our downtown vibrant. And um, I would encourage everybody who is considering that decision not to consider it just on a financial basis because at the end of the day, we're really talking about the fabric of our community and making the fabric of our community stronger. Um, and I think that's what OLM Prep does in that facility, hopefully for the next 50 plus years. Peggy, may I just mention one more thing? As the newest member of this, this con constituted board of selectmen, I just wanna say with the Island Avenue School Project, um, we came together as a board of selectmen 
And I, I think of where we were just two short months ago. And I have to say, this is the way it should be done. And I'm proud of the way we work together. And I hope we continue to do that. Here, Thank here. You. Thank you, Noreen. I, I agree. I echo. I think we did, we all just really came together and tried to do what we thought was the right for the town. And I'm, I'm hopeful that the town will agree with that as well. Well, so I think these are all really strong, well thought, thought out proposals that move our town forward and solve a lot of problems for us. Um, so I'm eager to vote then, I guess, all in favor, if that's all right, we call the vote. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, motion passes. I'm Collective excited. sigh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had some champagne. <laughs> um, I mean, I know this has been a long road for everybody. So um, I'm just grateful we can take it to this next step and encourage everybody to vote, get your absentee ballot application uh, at the town clerks. It's available now on the website. And then we will be having the ballots printed and they will be going out in the mail for those who have uh, requested one, um, hopefully next week. Um, so um, I think, that is it, isn't it, folks? <laughs> um, I guess we open it up to citizens' comments now. No one is raising their hand. Wow. <laughs> I think this is the first day I've had two Board of Selectmen meetings and zero public comments. So they're all they're um, all popping the champagne. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe I should say I'll move to adjourn. February 15th. <laughs> I will second that motion. All right. Thank you very much for everybody. Uh, appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Stay Take warm care. tonight. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> All See right. Ya. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye.